We physicists have waited a hundred years since 1916 for this photograph. It is a region where black holes might just be one of the most fascinating and mysterious phenomena in the universe. They are massive beasts in terms of power, but at the same time virtually invisible to us. A black hole weighing perhaps two to four million times the mass of the sun might be one of these. Because of the research invested over the last couple of decades, we have gone from knowing absolutely nothing about them to learning more and more up close and personal. And while things have just gotten crazier, Kaku has announced that we finally got to look at what's inside a black hole. This new information sheds light on details the world of science might have missed all along. Join us as we dig deeper into black holes and unveil what's inside. Space is vast, but what are black holes? Before we delve into the details of what Kaku found, we need to discuss the basics. Although most of us have some idea of what black holes are, there are still gaps in our understanding. In 1916, Albert Einstein published his theory of general relativity, which predicted the existence of black holes. At that time, the concept was purely theoretical. It took another 50 years for the scientific community to find evidence of their existence, which happened in the 1960s. Researchers studying the Cygnus constellation noticed an oddly bright blue star emitting X-rays. This star wasn't stagnant. It was orbiting a giant black object. Upon further investigation, it was found that the X-rays were being sucked into this object. Thus, the term black hole was coined. This discovery was significant because it proved that black holes were not just a figment of Einstein's imagination, but a real entity in space that we urgently needed to learn more about. Researchers around the world began to study this black hole named Cygnus X1, located in the Cygnus constellation about 6,000 light years from Earth. It was about 14 times brighter than the Sun and incredibly dense, with such a strong gravitational pull that not even light could escape it. This is why it is called a black hole. The concept of a black hole is both fascinating and terrifying. It is a region of space where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. Anything that gets too close to a black hole will be pulled into it, never to be seen again. This danger makes it even more crucial to learn everything there is to know about them. After discovering Cygnus X1, scientists started searching for other black holes and found there may be close to over 100 million black holes in the Milky Way alone. Because they are so incredibly hard to detect, we still don't have an exact number. Nevertheless, it appears there are several million black holes in our very galaxy, making them even more important to study. The main concern with black holes is always gravity. Their gravitational pull is so intense that anything entering it compresses down astronomically until it becomes a singularity. In simpler terms, black holes are like cosmic vacuum cleaners that suck everything in. One of the scariest aspects of black hole research is that if someone were to fall into one, they would be stretched into a single line. This process would happen slowly, and the person would die before the final form sets in. So, let's just say no one should step into one. However, since they are all over, could we really be in danger? Despite the closest black hole being 500 light years away, it is still close enough to raise questions and concerns. In 2021, scientists were able to release the first clear photograph of a black hole, specifically the M87 black hole. This black hole was photographed several nights in a row, and with each photograph, the researchers gathered more evidence. They had to stitch the individual photos together to create a comprehensive image, revealing that there are three layers to a black hole. It's not just one single gaping hole of nothingness, as many people believe. The process involves making it through the first two layers before reaching the nothingness part. The first layer is called the event horizon. Once you pass this point, there is no turning back. You will be sucked into the black hole. The second layer is the photon sphere, where light orbits the black hole. Any light entering this region will be trapped and unable to escape the black hole's gravitational pull. Finally, we come to the third layer, the singularity. This is where everything that enters the black hole gets compressed until it becomes a singularity, a point in space-time where the laws of physics as we know them break down and we cannot predict what happens next. The density at the singularity is infinite, and the laws of physics cease to exist. What makes all of this infinitely worse is that every single black hole studied will be entirely different from the last. They tend to follow the same three-layer concept, but the way they function can be vastly different. 
Normally, studying such phenomena would involve hopping back on telescopes and observing in detail, but with black holes, this isn't feasible. Scientists can only study black holes indirectly by observing the radiation they emit and the gas and dust surrounding them. Sending a probe like Voyager into a black hole is impossible because anything that enters the event horizon is pulled towards the singularity, where it is compressed to an infinitely small point. Thus, we can't waste billions of dollars on probes that would just be crushed into nothingness. Scientists are left with no choice but to study these objects in a two-dimensional way, even though they are three-dimensional phenomena. To make matters even more challenging, each black hole is unique and the laws of physics break down when exploring the inside. This means traditional methods of scientific inquiry don't really apply to black hole studies. However, researchers haven't been idle. There are many theories and explanations about black holes. One compelling theory is that they are created from collapsing stars. When a star exhausts all its fuel, it can no longer produce enough energy to counteract gravity, causing it to collapse in on itself and potentially become a singularity. To understand the nature of black holes in depth, NASA scientists turned their attention to the core of the galaxy M87. Astronomers observed a super-powerful whirlpool of super-hot hydrogen gas spinning at an astonishing rate of 1.2 million miles per hour. The sheer force of the spinning disk of gas should have caused it to fly apart, but it didn't. Scientists deduced that a colossal mass concentrated at the center of the galaxy prevented this from happening. This massive object, weighing as much as 2 to 3 billion suns, could only be a black hole. But that's not the only theory. In 1963, New Zealand mathematician Roy Kerr used Einstein's equations to describe a spinning black hole, showing that it wouldn't collapse into a point but rather form a ring of fire or a thin disk. This spinning disk of matter, called the ergosphere, is the region surrounding the black hole where the laws of physics start to break down. Kerr's solution also predicted the existence of an Einstein-Rosen bridge or wormhole, a theoretical passage through space-time that connects two separate regions of the universe or even two parallel universes. If one were to fall into a black hole instead of being crushed, they might be sucked down a tunnel through the ring of fire and shot out of a white hole in a parallel universe. To understand how this works, consider the concept of space-time in Einstein's theory. Space and time are interconnected, forming a four-dimensional fabric called space-time. Objects with mass warp this fabric, creating a gravitational field that causes other objects to move towards them. Imagine a sheet of paper representing space-time. If you place two points on the paper and draw a line between them, it represents how objects move through space-time. If you could fold the paper in half to create a shortcut between the two points, this represents a wormhole, a shortcut through space-time that connects two distant points instantly. Wormholes aren't just a sci-fi concept. They are a prediction of general relativity. Although no one has observed one directly, wormholes are inherently unstable and would collapse almost immediately. The existence of an Einstein-Rosen bridge would mean black holes are not just cosmic vacuum cleaners but could also be portals to other regions of space-time. Could we use a wormhole to travel through space and time? Unfortunately, the answer is probably no, not yet. Even if we could stabilize a wormhole, it is unlikely we could use it to travel faster than light. Einstein's theory of special relativity predicts that the speed of light is an absolute limit on how fast anything can travel through space-time. Despite this, the theory of wormholes and black holes as pathways to other parts of the universe or different times has fascinated physicists for decades. The idea of shortcuts through space-time, allowing travel across great distances or into the past, could be revolutionary if achievable. The Kerr wormhole, named after Roy Kerr, is one of the most intriguing concepts in this field. It is a hypothetical tunnel through space-time that could connect two distant points, such as different universes or different times within the same universe. The Kerr wormhole is ring-shaped, similar to the looking glass in Alice in Wonderland, where passing through it could potentially transport a traveler to another universe or time with different physical laws. While the idea of wormholes as means of interstellar or time travel is exciting, it is also controversial. Some physicists argue that wormholes, particularly Kerr wormholes, might be unstable or impossible to traverse due to intense radiation and subatomic forces. Critics point out that Einstein's equations used to describe wormholes and black holes only work for gravity and not for the quantum forces that govern radiation and subatomic particles. To truly understand these phenomena, 
A new theory is needed that unites gravity with quantum theory. A theory of everything that combines Einstein's theory of gravity with quantum theory. Michio Kaku, a renowned theoretical physicist, has been working on a theory of everything for decades. The only promising candidate is superstring theory, which unites gravity with quantum theory. It proposes that subatomic particles are tiny vibrating strings and that the universe is a symphony of these strings. Just as different musical notes correspond to different vibrations of a violin string, different particles in nature correspond to different vibrations of a superstring. Superstring theory also explains many mysterious phenomena by showing that as strings move through time, they warp the fabric of space, producing black holes, wormholes, and other exotic solutions to Einstein's equations. However, the extra dimensions of space-time required by superstring theory are so small that we can't study them directly. The most precise measurements in our laboratories only use the four dimensions of space-time we are familiar with length, width, depth, and time. How can we know the extra dimensions exist? One possibility is that these dimensions are curled up so tightly that they are invisible to us, similar to a sheet of paper tightly rolled into a cylinder. If you were an ant walking on the paper, you might not notice the curve. Similarly, the extra dimensions of space-time in superstring theory could be curled up into tiny loops or spirals that are invisible but affect the behavior of the strings vibrating in them. Another possibility is that these extra dimensions were more visible at the universe's beginning during the Big Bang. According to some versions of superstring theory, the universe began in a state of 10-dimensional space-time with all dimensions equally visible. As the universe expanded and cooled, the extra dimensions began to collapse and curl up, leaving us with the four dimensions we observe today. If this is correct, we might detect traces of the extra dimensions around us. The mathematics involved in superstring theory is incredibly complex and has opened new areas of mathematics. However, solving the problem of a quantum black hole has proven elusive. While many physicists have tried, no one has yet succeeded. Edward Witten of the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton has called superstring theory 21st century physics that fell accidentally into the 20th century. Last year, several physicists independently announced a significant breakthrough. String theory could completely solve the problem of a quantum black hole, although only in two dimensions, not ten. Many believe it's only a matter of time before someone cracks this problem. Until then, it's still too early to plan for intergalactic or time travel expeditions. With all this, one thing is clear. There are simply too many questions and even more potential solutions. Michio Kaku's string theory adds another spin. Perhaps the Big Bang wasn't as massive as commonly thought. It wasn't a massive explosion or a loud noise, as one might expect. The Big Bang theory doesn't explain what caused the supposed bang or how it occurred. It only states that it did happen. We need a theory that accounts for what happened before the Big Bang. String theory suggests that our universe might have formed from the collision of two separate universes or emerged from another universe, like a baby being born from its mother. This connection between universes is called a wormhole, akin to a tube connecting two bubbles. We may have already discovered evidence of this umbilical cord connecting our universe to another. In a way, we could be living inside a black hole unaware because we exist in four dimensions and can't see beyond them. It's possible we are actually in a black hole, and the black holes we study are wormholes to other dimensions.